Hey, welcome to Collins Creatures. I'm here with Steven Scafiri to see part of his Scafiri Zoo collection. So, hey Steve, how hey, are you? Good, how about you? I'm good. Thank you for coming out and checking out our collection. Well, it's, I'd love to see the animals. Yeah, we got some pretty cool stuff. Let's start with these blue tongue skinks. This is one of the oldest skinks I have. His name is Marino. So we got him around seven years ago. He's around nine. And um, we named him Marino because he's got a blue tongue. Like when you eat Marino's ices and your tongue turns blue. So he's a normal northern blue tongue skink that comes from Australia. So we've got a pattern morph that Colin's holding. It's called a great white. Where the white splotching goes further down the back. And then we've got this new gene called ivory where they start off like a white with a yellow tinge and they turn fully white as they get older. And this little guy's in shed right now, but when he clears up, he'll be almost fully white. Yeah. Let's go check out some other animals. Yeah, I'd love to see more animals, but before we do that, let's talk a little bit more about you. So, how'd you get started in with reptiles? Well, when I was like seven years old, I went to a birthday party and I actually held a blue tongue skink and it was one of the coolest experiences of my life. But once I found out you could actually keep them as pets, that's what I went out and got. So, um, since then I've always been interested going to zoos and aquariums my whole life and when my girlfriend Susan and I got together we started picking up all these animals, going to shows and now we're breeder, vendor and collectors. That's cool. So let's go see those animals. Sounds good. So what you got here? These are Bushveld's rain frogs. So these guys haven't been in the U.S. in about 20 years. So this is one of the first batches that just came in. Um, they're really cool and I hope that they're a pair. I believe that they are. Um, so I'm hoping that we can help facilitate the breeding of these guys in the U.S. I think they're going to be very popular in the pet trade because of how cool they are and how much social media potential they have. But I'm just hoping that we can source them captive bred from now on rather than wild caught. Yeah, I remember seeing these at Lebanon one time. Yeah, they're really cool. It's something totally unique that's kind of new, Back, getting back into the hobby. So see got an Asian water monitor. Can we get her out and get a closer look at her? Yeah, sure. This is Jade. She's our Javan Asian water monitor. We've had her for two years. She's about three years old. So she's going to get a lot bigger than this. But She's awfully tame for an Asian water monitor. It's impressive. Thank you. We've been working for years to get her like this. And she's very calm. So, it's. I'd like to know more about how you got her to be this way, but I think it deserves its own video because I think it would take a while. So, what do you think? About, what do you think about that? Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. Let's do it. No, well, it's like a little dragon. This here's Mumbo, our uh, Razorback bus turtle. And I got her for Susan when she was about the size of a quarter. So she's grown a lot since then. She's about five years old. But this is as big as a Razorback musk is gonna get, which is really great size for an aquatic turtle. You can keep something like this in a 20 to a 40 gallon tank. And it's much more reasonable than more of some of the popular uh, turtles like Red Eared Sliders and Mississippi Map Turtles even. So I think this is a great pet and one of our favorites. And I think she's really cool. Neat shell, snapping turtle-like face. And you'd be surprised, she doesn't even bother the fish that live with her in her tank. Huh. So, see that we got some kind of turtle here. What are they? These are Chinese box turtles, so Cora flava marginata. So they are really cool. They're endangered in China, so we're trying to keep a, a small breeding population here in the U.S. Uh, they're pretty hard to come by nowadays, even though they used to be all over the trade. So this is our small male, his name is Tonic, and that's our 30 plus year old female Jin. She's really cool. I really like the orange on their heads and the kind of yellowish stripe on their shell. Yeah, they make really cool pets too. Very active. So right here we got some western hognose snakes. So we've got some conda genes. These two are conda. The one Colin has in his right hand is a super conda, so that loses all pattern. And the one I have over here is a normal red line. So these are some of our females that we're breeding this year. 
Um, we have a lot of them are het for genes that are not visually expressed yet. So we have some offspring and some other babies that express those genes. So do you want to take a look at those? Yeah. So we got some more baby hog noses. This one's name is Mongo and it is an Arctic conda. That's a Blazing Saddles reference, isn't it? Yeah, but this one doesn't punch horses. <laughs> and Mongo is an Arctic conda. Then I've also got Kelso here, who's a pink pastel albino anaconda, or they call it a pink panther. Got a couple really nice hog noses here that we're growing up to breed. So this one is a super arctic albino. And this is the same thing, super arctic albino, but it also has the conda gene. Both very cool looking. I've got this Paradox Toffee male here. Some hog doses get this really cool black blotch on their pattern that's called Paradox. It happens totally randomly. And this is one of the darkest sable hog noses that I've seen. It's a sable head albino. I hope you make some cool babies. It certainly is the darkest hog nose I've ever seen. Um, almost reminds me of the eastern hog noses. Looks like Jay's been staring at us this whole time. <laughs> Hope she doesn't think it's a snack. These are some of our Colombian rainbow boas. So we have a normal het leucistic over here that Colin's holding. His name is Magic. And he's very iridescent in the light, which is really cool. And you specify this is a Colombian rainbow boa, and Colombian rainbow boas don't have the more impressive, the impressive appearance of the Brazilian rainbow boa, but they're easy to take care of because of a lower humidity. Yeah, I found that these guys are really easy to keep. Um, they're great beginner pets, and they come in some cool colors like these leucistics. So the big one I have here is Malibu. He is a black-eyed leucistic. So he has no pattern, but he keeps some iridescence, and he has full black eyes. And this right here is one of our blue-eyed leucistic babies. So they come in both colors. And recently there have been some albinos in the hobby too, which are really cool. So these are Mexican red tail indigo snakes, and while they're called red tails, these specific localities do not have the red tails, they mostly just have a white belly, and for the most part are just black with the white belly. The Guerrero um, variant does have the red bellies and tails, and indigo snakes are related to Kribos and other kinds of indigo snakes like the Eastern Indigo, the Texas Indigo, and the yellow tail and black tail Kribos. And what's cool about them is they're crushers. So unlike a constrictor, which will squeeze their prey until the prey goes into cardiac arrest, and they don't have venom like a like a viper or an lapid, they just go straight in, crushing their prey until it dies. They're certainly very interesting. This is a Sonoran locality, and this here is a Veracruz. So they're very cool snakes. They're closely related to the Eastern Indigo. Um, they look very similar. Cool thing about these is you can obtain them a little easier than the Eastern, and they are not endangered in the same way that the Eastern is, or protected in the way they are. These two, sadly, are both in shed today, but uh, they have a really cool iridescence when they're not in shed. That's kind of bluish, which is why they have the name Indigo Snakes. Hmm. That's cool. We've got some blood pythons here. These are actually Sumatran short tails. They're very similar to blood pythons. They come from a different area. Um, this right here is Malfoy. He's got orange eyes and a black head. He's a, a real pure Sumatran. Certainly really cool. I've had him since he was a baby, about as big as these guys. And he's gotten huge for us. And these are a new line called Tuxedos. So I'm hoping that these will grow up, produce for us 
blood python similar to the one the adult that we showed you but with big white stripes down the sides so this is a new project we're working with well i certainly had a great time seeing all these really awesome animals especially the monitor who keeps watching us well thank you for coming my pleasure so thanks for watching subscribe to my channel like my videos and i'll see you next time on Collins Creatures. Creatures.